you're joining us this morning. While we know this year looks a little different, we're encouraged and we know God will be with us during this time. We want you to feel loved during this season. Now if you're watching this video alone, make sure you have a pad of paper and a pen. You also need to have the ability to pause and play the video. We're going to be asking questions and giving you time to either journal or discuss with your group. And this video is meant to be shared, so if you're not watching it live or, or you want to share with somebody else at a later date, Go ahead and share it on your Facebook page or email it to somebody you think that would enjoy this video. This is meant to be shared the entire Advent season. And don't forget, we have prizes to give away. Prizes! I love prizes! So there's several ways you can win prizes. The first one is if you're watching this live on December 12th, post a picture to Facebook of you and your group and hashtag New Life Women. And if you're by yourself, you can post the, the, take a picture of yourself watching the video and post that same thing for a prize. And a second way you can win is if you made the recipes on the website, like Patty's scones. Or Jan's egg casserole. Or you printed the decorations, go ahead and post a picture of that and hashtag New Life Women as well. 
One of the other ways you can win a prize is to share this video. We want as many women encouraged during the season as possible. So share the video on your social media or through email and hashtag new life women to and win a prize. Yeah. And lastly, if social media isn't your thing, we encourage you to email us at morningswithchrist at gmail.com. Send us a story about hope, peace, joy, and love, and how that ha you have had an experience with that during this Advent season. And before we jump in, let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for bringing all these women to us. While I know this year looks like a different season during the COVID time, I just encourage all these ladies to get connected and hopefully through these videos we can encourage them and love on them and just find time to be together even though we have to be apart at times. In Jesus name, amen. Amen. And let's get started with a quick video. guys, this is Dana and Joe. I'm so excited to be invited to the planning meeting. So I have all our lists. Oh, okay. I have everything color coded. Here's okay. your list. Shop, My clean, list. bake. Okay. Yeah, right here. Oh, Here's yours. Thank you. Oh yeah, thank there you go. Oh, whoa. There you wow. go. We have so much to thank do. Thank you, Joe. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, wait. So just to clarify real quick, I called you here for until we were going to talk about Advent today. Not the Christmas Oh, meeting. Advent. I yes. love Advent. <laughs> and I don't shop, bake, clean anyway. So that's perfect. Good, good, good. I was like, I know we're playing around right now. But busyness is real, especially in the holiday season. I often have to pray against busyness just in our daily lives. I was like, my grandmother used to tell me all the time that busyness is the way that the devil just distracts us from what God is doing in our lives, like right in front of our faces. And so with being married to David, and that is busy right there. I have two <laughs> jobs, busy. four kids. <laughs> like it gets busy. Everyone wants to do something. We have to be at three places at once. It just gets busy. So we have learned in our life that we just pray against busyness, um, especially in the Advent season. So if the devil ever wanted to mess with us and create busyness to distract us, Advent would be the perfect time to do that. Um, Advent is supposed to be this time of waiting and anticipation and just waiting and preparing our hearts for Christ's coming. I was like, so for Jesus, and we just fill it with so much stuff that we kind of lose focus. I know you celebrated Advent as a child. I was like, do you want to share some of your Advent experience? I would love to. This has just been the best season of um, unlocking some childhood memories and traditions. And my family, the Will family, we always did, com um, not communion. <laughs> 
<laughs> Advent. <Like drive. laughs> but we... Hey, we that just adds to our busyness. Makes sense. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, but we always did Advent as a family, and um, it looked pretty similar to this, actually. But um, we had one of our pastor's wives create this um, Advent guide, Happy Birthday Jesus, in 1975. Whoa, because I'm a little old. <laughs> but we would do this every year. And it's something that I remember so fondly when you talk about anticipation, because we knew the first Sunday of December, my mom would get the Advent candles out. It would come in a wreath. We would also get our nativity scene out. And we would be able to play with the different characters, putting them into their correct roles. and uh, we knew we would do that every Sunday night and um, how Pastor David's been doing it. We've been talking about peace, hope, um, joy, joy and love, yeah. but we called it the shepherd candle, the wise men candle, the angel candle and the baby Jesus candle. And in our house every Sunday, we would have different roles to play and doing it. And we knew um, our dad was going to read from the Bible and that we could do different verses. And because I'm the oldest and a little bossy, I would take control <laughs> over who got what role. And um, the pink candle um, was my favorite because it's the angel candle. I mean, really, I'm a little <laughs> angel, but I would take control <laughs> of this candle and be able to light it on the third week of Advent. And uh, we would also be able to choose the song that our mom would play on the piano and we would sing. And I always chose Hark the Herald Angels Sing. And um, to this day, that is my favorite Christmas song. So, but we would watch in the hope or the uh, shepherd candle would always be about this big the week of Christmas. So when you talk about anticipating, like you would know Christmas is almost here. Celebrating baby Jesus is almost here when you would see the heights of the candles. I love it. I was like, we, um, when Xavier, after Xavier was born, David's uh, mom bought us, or mom and dad bought us a book and it is the Advent book. And we have read this with our kids every year, even to this day, and they're all grown and um, old teenagers and all that. And um, the best part is, in the beginning it says, uh, his name shall be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. And each day you get to open a door, and it's a door and you get to read part of the story. And then each day the kids would be so excited and a different kid would get to open um, another door and get to read. That's and cool. they still to this day, um, now we're not as good as we used to be with um, trying to do one every single night, um, which is fine. So we just do some catch up days. <laughs> um, but it is just literally kind of the tradition that we've had that we knew that it was kind of preparing our hearts for that. Um, growing up, I don't really remember doing Advent that much. Um, sorry, mom, if I, uh, <laughs> if I did and I, I just forget. But um, the thing as a child that I really remember is the candles and the fact that it would be um, like, so each week they light one and, um, and then they light another one the next week. So we would go into church and it would be, they'd make it all dark and then that one light yeah. would just light up and like the whole sanctuary, you had no idea what one little light could do and it just was so big. And, um, and then every week it got bigger and bigger, the light did. And it was just such a fun reminder that Jesus is the light in the darkness and right. how easily it grows and gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So that was always my favorite kind of thing. And this year with everyone doing it together, I know you were excited about that. Oh, absolutely. Um, just because to me it is such a tradition. And when we were talking even amongst staff, there were so few of us that grew up doing this. And yeah. I was so excited, but I'm one, I'm finding that during this, this season, this Christmas, that's so different that I find we're talking more about the hope candle and the peace candle than we're talking about busyness. Yeah. You know, people are um, wanting to talk about that and being on social media and seeing people's candles lit and yes. seeing the videos we're doing. And you just know that God had this time created yeah. for this. And I, I just love it. I don't even know who posted, but one of my favorite was with a picture with the little kids just staring at the candles yes. and like this all of like, <gasps> I was like, this is like what we're talking about with Advent and just that preparing your hearts and surrounding this crazy season. Right. Um, and the wonder of the season. Yes. yes. Yeah. I love it. I love that. So in the crazy video you watched in the beginning, um, it was kind of fun, but it also had so much truth to it. <laughs> right. I'm going to read one part that it um, talked about and it says, Advent is expectant waiting, hopeful anticipation, and joyful preparation for God coming into our lives and our hearts in all moments all places and in all times. I'm gonna read that one more time. 
Advent is expectant waiting, hopeful anticipation, and joyful preparation for God coming into our hearts and our lives in all moments, all places, and in all times. So we talked about all of the moments, like the key moments that we thought in our lives that had this anticipation or like we were in waiting or kind of thing. Right. So um, one I know we talked about was high school. You yes. want to talk about that? Like just how you were in high school and you were ready to... <laughs> that was a long time ago. But the I liked how we were talking about it. We were preparing for college or moving out. Yes. Or for me, it was being an exchange student and talking about the different things. Are you going to pack? Who are you going to tell? You send out the announcements. You get gifts in the mail. Yeah, or matching bread spreads when you... Like, oh, like do, oh yeah, I missed did. out on matching you did it? Oh, We got the roommate and you had to call and be like, <laughs> I'm going to get a blue one and you're going to get a blue And so coordinating and matching all that was kind of fun. Yeah. And then we talked about dating and yes. getting married and what that looks like. There's a lot of preparation oh, for yes. that of what your yes. dress is going to look like, the event, who you're going to invite. Oh, my word. I feel like I had like list and list <laughs> and list of everything because you're trying to make everyone happy and you're trying to honor your parents and your family but you're also trying to make it about you and um this is like your moment to share with everyone that's going to come to the wedding and right. you just the anticipation of how they're going to receive it did they notice this and then do they notice that and oh, just the time point. and effort that you put into that and then by the time like you got done with the details and all that then you were just done waiting and you're like let's just go elope let's just <laughs> like i'm done that's i don't so want to wait true. anymore and you're like uh because we were so let's see we got married young and we were still in college so we were trying to do schoolwork and try to not like completely focus on just the wedding like that was like it was just yeah. your world at that moment um but just like by the end of it you're like I'm done we've been engaged for like a year we've been doing this forever like I'm out like let's just go get yep. married and be done with this there's so many details and Mike was so ready <laughs> to do that <laughs> I was like the amount of people I think. Um, new jobs. New jobs is one. Um, I mean, just our story of the anticipation of we didn't even remotely think that God would ever move us out of Michigan. So the anticipation of that and the excitement and all of that, like once we knew that we were supposed to go and we felt like God was leading us to go, then it was like, okay, like we got to just get there now and get going and yeah. running. But there was still that waiting and trying to figure out like, just all the details that go with it. So that busyness got a little crazy and overwhelming. Always think of your moving van. That was the biggest moving van I've ever seen. Oh, I know, right? And then we were like, oh, why would we move all this? Just all that craziness <laughs> that in the moment, it was too crazy and yeah. stressful to really just yeah. see what we were supposed to be doing. You kind of got wrapped up in that busyness again. Right. So yeah. Right. Um, and then babies. Oh, my word. Like when having like deciding to have a family. We we had a five-year plan of no babies, and then we had four kids in five years. Well, we have so, a honeymoon baby, oh, so yes, same, same thing. There was, <laughs> yeah, there's definitely, there's some anticipation with uh, planning, but then right. once, like, uh, it, we can all plan, but it never goes as you plan. Right. And then, but um, nine months of, oh. of waiting and praying and dreaming yes yeah. and names yes that's a big pressure they that's have to big... live the rest of their life with this name and so just trying to figure out the um name and just all of that went with yeah. it and preparing your home and i gotta get You're a room be a gotta strict get a... mom and not strict mom oh, yes yeah. so all many that. things or yeah. a crib and what colors a cradle and... right oh so many right. things i was like but you just get lost in it and sometimes you forget about just the being in that moment and just right. the joy that kind of goes with that I was like, after babies, there's always... Well, I hear that there's the grandma season, but I'm waiting um, <laughs> patiently, mm. expectantly. Did See? I say patiently? Yeah, I'm waiting yes. for that you're, one. You're better than I am because <laughs> my poor husband now, I come home begging, like, can we just adopt more babies? I just want babies now. And my kids are nowhere near ready <laughs> to get married and have no. babies. So I'm just always looking for babies. Like, I'm like, please, can we just go get more babies? Like, any baby we'll just take. So he'll probably, I will not be good at waiting. <laughs> I was like, I was like, so, I'm trying. Yes, that's just one of those things you got to pray through yeah, and all that. But I love that, just waiting expectantly. Yes. Yeah. So going back to that statement, the biggest thing that stood out to me was that in all of these moments, everything we talked about jokingly and with COVID going on in every yeah. single moment, God offers us the best gift we could ever ask for. It's his presence. He's right. with us in every moment. And right at this very moment, he's with us. And that, I mean, I don't feel like we could get any better of a situation than that. Right? Agreed. Like it's, Agreed. 
Especially I don't want to lose that in the busyness and yeah. craziness of the holiday season. Yes. Especially so, this season. Oh, yes. Right now. Yeah. It's hard to stop and be like, no. Like right now, where am I at and how can I focus and how can I see yeah. what God's doing right now? And I think what I also really like about this is that some people have said it just doesn't feel like Christmas. Yeah. Um, some of us had our trees and things out in October, but still not feeling that feeling because things are so weird. Yeah. and different and that's what i love about this lighting the hope peace love joy and that we're doing it together yes just a fun yeah family it, feeling it really even is. if we're alone we're still there together that's right light your candle yes okay. so we have some questions we're going to pause you want to read our questions joe for them or do you want me to grab them i'm the other one. i might have to borrow your paper okay fine <laughs> So, but at this time you're to pause, you can refill your coffee, make sure you can see if you're doing this via Zoom, but um, you can cut that out. All right. <laughs> Do you find yourself getting lost in the busyness of the season? What things can you put in place to help this from happening? Do you want, want to take the one? second one? Yeah. Sure. So discuss when you have been in waiting and have seen God move and where are you currently in waiting now? So I am really excited to be able to do this part with my friend Elena. And as I'm always looking for um, something good in each day during this COVID season, one of the things I have just um, been really blessed with is the continued friendship with Elena. And I feel like that's something that had just started developing. In January, we decided to start having coffee together once a week so we could kind of get to know each other because we work together. And um, boy, did God have big plans for us. So I'm just super excited to do this with you today. Yes, I've loved our tribe walking dates together. Um, it has been just such a blessing during the craziness of this COVID season. So as we know, God brings good out of everything. And you are one of the goods. And coffee. And coffee, yes. And I'm super excited that we get to talk about hope and peace because that is just something that God has really laid on my heart in this season um, as it has been a struggle, I think, for most of us to continue to find hope and peace um, as everything around us seems crazy. Um, and one of the definitions or phrases um, around hope that has really resonated with me is that what hope is, is um, the ability to have uh, divine imagination oh, I and like um, I the reason why I love that is because it has the word divine in there meaning that there is sort of a supernatural element to hope that it's not something that you just muster up yourself it's not just blind optimism or you know shutting your eyes and just hoping for the best but it there's like a there's a divine aspect to hope and um, as a creative I'd love the phrase imagination and even just thinking of like my son growing up and the crazy imagination that he has and um, so it just has resonated with me that having hope is having a divine imagination where you can look at the circumstances that around that are around us you can see all the chaos and the pain and the hurt and the anger and still have an imagination to see how God can bring about good from that situation and um, like I said there is something supernatural about it because when we do look around at our circumstances and we look around at our families and just the hurt so many people are hurting right now that you know it is it, there's nothing um normal about it and there's nothing that makes sense that of how why we should have hope but we get to have the imagination to um just imagine what god can do through a season like this and i think what also is really cool about that is that that's how god sees us when god looks at you and when he looks at me and when he looks at you he has a divine imagination you know he doesn't just see I mean, he sees our flaws and he knows us inside and out, but he has this imagination to know what we are going to be and how he's going to bring about it and that he is faithful to finish what he started in us. And Joe, I don't know about you, but in this season, it has been increasingly hard to continue to have that divine imagination. Do you feel the same way? <sighs> Yes. So I wake up, I think, every other day and quit the pandemic and tell Mike, okay, I, I'm done here. Done. <laughs> it's done. Time it's to be done. done. 
And then um, God always counters whether it's a really good praise song, it's a text from a friend, it's a really pretty sunrise, and it's like, okay, okay, there's hope. <laughs> Keep moving. And I think, like, like you said, I think that there is something, um, there's this other phrase that we've talked about a lot actually recently. It was in our Advent devotionals, and it's been something that over the past maybe six months or so um, has also stuck with me, and it's this phrase called prisoner of hope. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about it in our Advent videos, and it's been in our devotionals, but um, it started for me from a conversation that I had with a friend a few months ago who was going through a difficult time, and we were talking about this this phrase and what it meant and how sometimes we resonated with it and sometimes we didn't like it because the word prisoner sometimes has these <laughs> negative connotations. And um, we, we started talking about what it means to hope um, in difficult times. And when, like we said, when everything around us is telling us to lose hope. Um, and we talked about this word prisoner about how we are captive by it. We're captive by the hope that we don't necessarily even have another choice and sometimes that is painful and so my friend and i we talked about how sometimes in these difficult times hope hurts yeah. and you know and like you said a lot of days it's easier just to wake up and be like i'm done i'm out like give up time to just like eat some ice cream and forget about what's happening <laughs> and but god you know that's god has so many better things for us and i think that that phrase prisoner of hope you know in some ways, it, it's not a very fun phrase because hope does hurt. And in sometimes it is a lot easier just to, to give in and just to, to quit. But that divine imagination comes in and it just won't let us. It just won't let us quit. You know, it just won't let us give up. And from that conversation with my friend, I made these stickers for New Life. Um, and I put them on my little coffee mug because it is just a reminder that... Um, we are prisoners of hope. We are not blind optimists or pessimists, but we are bound to hope because of who God is. And we know the end of the story. Yeah. And that is a big factor. There's this like silly meme that's been going around that's meant to be funny, but um, it says, um, I'm waiting around to see if the world's going to end before I put in some real effort. I and it's, it's cheeky and it's <laughs> funny, but yeah. um, as a Christian and as a believer, like that's not an option for us. We know how the story ends. We know what God is going to do and we have the hope and we are grounded in the truth that God is going to do what he says he's going to yeah. do. And because of that truth, we are prisoners. Joe, do you have a time of your life where you have felt like maybe you were bound as a prisoner of hope? Um, yes, and actually where I felt like I had uh, fallen out of the boat and was sinking fast. And um, during this COVID season, I've been reminded of that season, not because I am feeling it again, but it is such a reminder of where um, God has taken me and what has happened in the last 12 years and how he does not waste anything that we go through, whether it is our own circumstances, choices, COVID season, he doesn't waste any of it. And, you know, about 12 years ago, I really struggled with depression and anxiety. And there was a time actually where I uh, didn't leave my house for about a year. And um, when I did, it was so painful. I would hide my head behind somebody. If I saw somebody I knew, whether I was in the grocery store or restaurant, whatever, I would just bolt. And I never thought there would be a time where um, I would work with people, talk with people, absolutely do anything like this. <laughs> like, this is still crazy. But it is um, just such an example of um, our stories aren't over and that God has such big plans for us. And um, during that time, you know, I received counseling, but I really thought that um, there was no hope for me. And... Um, that he was done with me, but I continued on because my kids were in high school and um, I had a husband and I just would continue, but I was faking it a lot. Like I would get out of bed just before they came home from school. I would uh, force myself um, to change my shirt um, so they wouldn't think I was in my pajamas all day. And uh, truth be told, a friend for about a year would come over with a donut right before they came home. So she'd lure me out of bed with the donut, change my shirt, brush my hair. And um, 
But as that happened, I could feel God continue to call me. And at first it was, I thought God's voice had um, become so faint, but really it was the anxiety and depression that was louder. And um, people have often asked, you know, where is God in our pain? And I really uh, strongly believe that he is, he is in the people that he sends. And people did not give up. They didn't stop coming, even though I wouldn't let them in. I wouldn't answer my phone, but they wouldn't stop mailing cards, doing things. And um, part of my story that I love the most is here at New Life because um, we would come for food. And Kathy Conway would never let me get away without a hug, um, a gift card, a scripture, and prayer. And I would back up when I would see her coming, like, uh-oh, here she comes. <laughs> and she covered me with so much love and hope. And I started realizing that's what hope is. And um, as this Christmas season, and this is a tough, this is a tough season, and I was thinking about the Christmas then, um, about 11 years ago, and we did not have anything, and my kids were in high school, and we were just all, all drowning without hope. And um, it was Christmas morning, and I just happened to look out our window, and our front door was covered with tinsel and garland and fake snowflakes and glitter, so much glitter. <laughs> And um, and gift cards and scripture. And I can go back to like when your story changes and when hope and peace start coming and just surrender. It was that time at my door where um, and we could hear um, the glitter queen laughing as she went <laughs> down the street. But there was so much hope on that door of um, don't give up. And so I, I go back to that time of um, how God just did not give up on me and uh, that I would be sitting here, that I would work for a church, that I get to um, encourage people to not give up is just such a blessing and such a testimony to, to him. Well, that's what's crazy about your story is how full circle it's come in that, like, by you talking about somebody bringing glitter to your door, I mean, that's basically what you do every day of your life now, is you get to encourage people. And, I mean, what a beautiful story to show you coming from darkness and having a time of darkness. And through that season, God equipping you and strengthening you and not wasting that hurt that you had so that you can now be a blessing to others. And I know everybody at New Life would attest to the fact of how much you have blessed people with a lot of glitter and <laughs> balloons. I love balloons. <laughs> um, but I love that during this season, I feel like what God has really put on my heart is that he has not lost sight of any of us, not even for a moment, not even in COVID, none of that. He has not lost sight of us and our plans and that he has good. And, but the struggles are real and depression, anxiety are real and just um, asking for help or I feel like we're called to be the people who show up with a donut or show up with glitter. And you say something about, is it relentless hope? What mm -hmm. is that? I We have a poster in our office that says we are people of relentless hope. Yeah. And it is, it's hope, it should be relentless. I agree. Because that's how God is relentless in his pursuit of us. Yep. And so um, we would love for you to discuss um, some of these topics and we have a couple questions that we'd like you to think about. You can either journal them or you can talk in your Zoom group or um, with your mom or whoever you're watching this with. The first question is, where has God given you a divine imagination? A divine imagination for your here and now or a divine imagination for the future? Um, in this season, have you found it easier to resign yourself to anxiety or depression or despair? Um, or have you found yourself to be a prisoner of hope? And has there been a time in your life when, when hoping has been hurtful? Discuss. Hi, I'm Brianna and I'm here with my friend Ashley. 
We're talking about love and joy this season. Man, it's been hard. It has been a tough season. It's uh, This 2020 season has been hard to focus on the love and joy. I think one of the biggest challenges I've had is I feel like 2020 just took all of my expectations that I had that I didn't even realize were expectations and um, just pulled, pulled the rug under everything. And I think I didn't realize how attached I was to my expectations and how much that affected my joy and love in uh, daily life. Yeah, for sure. Um, I've really always struggled with expectations. I set myself to this high expectation and then that just kind of goes to where I hold other people, you know, to these high expectations. And what I found, especially throughout COVID season, is all of those expectations I had for this year just got thrown out the window. Mm -hmm. Mine you know, too. We had to reset. We had to stay at home. We had to do things that we never knew. But I mean, it was a good reset and throwing out all those expectations. What I found is I actually enjoy my time more because when you don't have expectations, you can just enjoy and you can love other people more. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of the times we set these goals and these expectations of, you know, normal ones, or I would say was normal prior to 2020, like our kids going to school or, you know, getting to separate from my husband during working hours. <laughs> and um, when they pulled all that under the rug, I realized how much my expectations were hinder hindering my joy, where or, or they were attached to my joy. So when they pulled all that away, it was like, okay, wait, I need to reset here. I need to figure out where my joy is really coming from. And that allowed me to love so much more once I was really able to retie my joy to something more stable. Yeah, one of the stories I always like to um, talk about is on one of my anniversary trips, you know, I'm a planner, I have an itinerary, and so me and my husband were going to um, LA and Catalina. Mm -hmm. And so literally I had a step-by-step, day-by-day, hour-by-hour itinerary. That is so itinerary, you. <laughs> and it's so me. And so as we were going, things weren't happening. And these expectations I had of this trip, you know, just weren't coming. And I wasn't enjoying the moments with my husband and, you know, the time together. And so one day my husband's like, just throw out the itinerary. Like, we're not sticking to it. Like, and then we just had the best time because all those expectations were out the window. Mm -hmm. I think it allows us to move in our relationships when we get rid of the expectations. It allows us to uh, really allow people to be themselves more, allows our relationship to grow, and it allows God to move. I mean, how many times do we put expectations on God and um, when he really wants something bigger and greater for us? Exactly. Yeah, you know, another way during this um, COVID season, I've, you know, really had to refocus on how I can love on other people. And one of the ways, there's two people in my life, I won't mention them in case they watch, <laughs> but um, that really, you know, just aggravate me maybe because I'm too close to them or something but I love them but they just their personality traits just kind of you know get on my nerves sometimes and so what I've really found is how can I love on them during this season because you know my job kind of went by the wayside and so um, I've just had all this extra time and so what I've really found is I'm good at organizing and so for one of them I go to their house and I just help them organize you know and they're so grateful for it and then another person you know I've helped them do like a Christmas gift and it's required so much time and effort and they're so grateful for the help that I'm doing but yeah just loving on others because if I had expectations that were set so high during this season and just in general then I wouldn't be able to love others as well as I am during this yeah I think as we uh, we fill our lives so I mean that's one of been the blessings of COVID, COVID is that we fill our lives so full we don't get the opportunity to find that I know I heard a pastor say once <clears throat> that it's in the margin the margin is that extra time that we leave ourselves but that's where love happens that's where friendship happens that's where you're able to help somebody in need and if we book ourselves back to back to back to back to back we don't have time for the margins and therefore we're really eliminating relationships and love and the joy comes out of that 
Yeah, exactly. And so like before COVID, I mean, you would look at my schedule. It was back to back. Like you talked mm -hmm. about, like I didn't even have time to breathe. I was running from appointment to appointment and then COVID hit and my whole schedule freed up. And now I have to find ways to fill my time. Mm -hmm. And how have I done that? By loving on other people. And it's crazy to me to think that I used to always try to find happiness in all these different ways. And now it's so simple by taking the focus off yourself and helping other people has brought so much joy during the season to my life. Yeah, it really does. It fills us with joy. And I know so many times God has, we have these expectations of God. We want him to fill these needs or these wants that we have in our life. And oftentimes when they're not being met, we feel disappointed or because we have this expectation of God. And there's so many times where he's like, just wait, I have something so much better for you. I had, I heard, a, um, I was listening to a podcast of this ministry and this man was sharing on there. He was one of the heads of the ministry and it's a ministry where they take these retired CIA workers, uh, military, like high military people, everyone that's retired, maybe they were in the FBI, and they use their skills to work together to take down child trafficking rings. And so as he's retiring from his job, him and his wife weren't able to have kids. And this was kind of a, a rough transition for him. He found this, this place where his skills were so good. And he went on this mission and he said, that they, he was on this mission and he said that when they go to the missions and they're rescuing these kids, the kids are really scared and nervous. So they hand out candy bars to these kids so that the candy bar, so because these kids are malnourished, they don't have food and that soothes them, calms them down and so that they can help easily transition them. And he picked up this little girl and he gave her a candy bar and then this little boy was following her around and he gave him a candy bar, but he said he threw the candy bar down and he wouldn't leave. And it took him a minute to realize that he was holding that little boy's sister. And in that moment, he realized that that little boy was not, that little boy wasn't gonna leave. He didn't want the candy bar no matter how malnourished because he was protecting his sister and he hit his knees. He knew right then, he called his wife and said, our kids are right here. He saw the same courage that he had in his job and everything in that little boy. And in that interview, he said, God bless me way more than I could have ever had just from that. So there's so many times where, I mean, that's one instance, but he takes these moments of desires that we have. Those desires are in us, but we create these expectations of this is how it's supposed to go. When so many times he has so much, something so much greater for us. Yeah, what a great story. It's gonna make me cry. <laughs> Only because, you know, during Advent, you know, I've been learning this waiting season, you know, and for me, you know, talking about not being able to have children, um, you know, I've been in waiting for 11 years, not being able to have children. And so trying to find love and joy during that season, God's really teaching me. He's bringing me closer to him, you know, and it's like, I know he has something so good for me in store and hopefully it's a child. And if it's not, you know, that's okay too. But yeah, so just finding love and joy in the waiting and you know advent again is a season of waiting you know we're we're encouraged we're finding hope peace love joy as we you know um wait for the birth of christ on christmas day and so for me you know just finding love joy um hope and peace has been such a great learning lesson during this time of waiting in my life me too and i realize you know these love and joy, they're, they're virtues. They're something, they're not an emotion like happiness. It, there's, there's something we need to work on. There's something that we can grow from that and we can lose our joy, but we can regain it. If you're in a season of losing joy or struggling with it, there are things we can do. We can dive deep and regain our joy. It's a muscle that we have to work and grow. And I think this season with COVID and this Advent season specifically, that's something that I'm really grateful for is his ability to refocus me. And t there's no ties to anything where our joys were tied to before, our love was tied to before. Yeah, um, I used to think happiness was something that 
you know, if I got that next thing, that's going to make me happy. If I get married, mm -hmm. you know, if I have a baby and it's like our hope and our joy and our love and all these things can't be tied to certain things, you know, it has to be our foundation on God. Mm -hmm. So when everything else happens, when COVID happened, like, you know, our business shut down, it's still shut down to this day. Um, you know, everything just went out the window that all these expectations of what I thought life was going to be, mm -hmm. you know. And so like monetarily wise, is it the right time to pursue fertility treatments because of our business shutdown, you know. And so just by letting those expectations go out the window and putting my foundation on God, when all those things go away, it's okay. I'm not going to crumble. My mm -hmm. house will stand firm on my belief that God will be there and protect us through everything. Yeah, because he's good. And, and when we stand on the fact that we know his plan is the best plan for us and we can let go of our expectations, it's a freedom that I think hope, joy, peace, and love all come out of that freedom exactly and i keep just going back to god is love mm -hmm. you know and it's so simple and yet i've made it so difficult like oh i need to do this to be enough for god i need mm -hmm. to do this to be enough for god no there's nothing i can do to earn god's love mm -hmm. god is love and the only thing he wants from us is to us to love other people that same way mm -hmm. so we have a question for you guys uh, the question for you today is what expectations have you put on yourself or your loved ones and on God that are limiting your ability to experience more joy and love in your life? What would it look like to eliminate these expectations? Thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoyed this women's Christmas breakfast. We pray you know the wonder of hope, peace, joy, and love this Advent season. We pray as we close our Christmas breakfast that we will be people who are bearers of that same hope, peace, joy, and love to the world around us. This has been a really hard year, and one of the ways that I'm encouraged and filled with hope, peace, joy, and love is when I'm able to connect and be encouraged by the women here at New Life. We encourage you to start off 2021 with that same encouragement. Here are some of the ways you can get plugged in with our January Women's Ministries. Hi, I'm Ashley. And I'm Karen, and we are some of the leaders of Propel. Propel is for every woman who desires to make an impact in her world for the kingdom. She believes she is to be sent into the harvest field using her unique passions and talents to influence her world for the gospel. Everything about her is forward-moving and missional. She does not see her calling or career as compartmentalized from her identity, but understands that her God-given identity is the core of her influence in every sphere she walks into. Her relationships, her studies, her workplace. She is compelled by a deep inner conviction that she is meant for something more, something greater than herself, something challenging yet fulfilling. She understands that in order to fulfill her purpose, she must be surrounded by like-minded women who encourage her, challenge her, and help her grow. In January, we will be starting our next series on momentum. For many of us, 2020 has brought us to a halt. For some, this is a good thing. We were in need of a pause to refocus. But if we want to become the women God has called us to be, it's important that we are active and ready for what's next. This series considers what it means to always be ready for God's call and how we can partner with Him for greater momentum. We will meet the first Saturday of the month starting January 2nd at 9 a.m. This year, we will be meeting in a Zoom group online, and I hope to see you there. Hi, I'm Mary Osler, and this is Michelle Townsend, and we're privileged to be here to talk to you about Time Together on Wednesday nights at 6 p.m. And we believe walking in the presence of God is our greatest desire. We want to draw nearer to Him and nurture a deeper relationship with Him, with our ultimate goal being spiritual growth and maturity. The way we do that are four priorities, the first of which is learning the Bible. We're dedicated to leading women on a transforming journey that studying God's Word can take us on. And we leave seeking um, our women to become more comfortable with their Bibles is, is what we want to do so that they'll have an appetite to dig through the richness of God's Word. Secondly is prayer. We believe it's absolutely necessity to develop a relationship with God by being in prayer with Him daily. 
It is the foundation of our ministry, and intercessory prayer protects and strengthens us in all that we do. We also honor God by celebrating answer prayers. Our third point is fellowship and making connections, my favorite part. We want to create a spiritual-filled atmosphere for our ladies to walk into each week. What, no matter what their path has been, no matter where they've been, or no matter where their Christian walk is, we just want them to all feel welcome when they walk through the doors. And we can do that over a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, or we can do that by um, sitting in our groups and discussing our Bible study and praying, or we can do it over our wonderful potluck that we have every week that all the women are so generous in bringing this beautiful food for us to enjoy. The fourth point is joy. One of the ways we celebrate uh, our love for Jesus is by having fun together. And in Job 8.21 it says, He will fill your mouth with laughter and your lips with rejoicing. And that's what we do. That's the verse that we live each week in our Bible study on Wednesday nights. For this reason, I consider it a pleasure to invite you to come in. And believe me, we are saving a seat for you. Hi, I'm Brianna. And I'm Michelle. We're two of the leaders of the Thursday Morning Bible Study. We meet every Thursday morning at 930, and we dive into the Word together. It's so great to be together, to dive into the Word together, to pray together, and to really just encourage each other. I think that's one of the most important things that we do on Thursday mornings. Right. We can pray for each other. We support each other. We hold each other up. And it's so, so necessary for us to be able to get together with God's Word. We'll be studying the book of Isaiah. Yeah, so Thursday mornings at 9.30, we'd love to invite you. We're going to start the end of January. Uh, we're being a little flexible about what this is going to look like this season because of COVID. We will probably have a mix of options between outdoor meetings, in-home meetings, and Zoom meetings. So uh, check with our website as we get closer in January. It should be the last Thursday of January, but we'd love to have you there. Hi, moms. My name is Katie, and I'm one of your leaders for the Moms and Mentors team. Normally, we like to meet together and just provide a place for you to be encouraged and us to share just life as a mom. Um, right now, we can't meet in person, so what we're doing is just reminding you that you're not alone. You can find us on Facebook, search Moms and Mentors New Life Pismo. You can find us on Instagram, at New Life Moms. And we just want you to feel comfortable coming there, looking for a little encouragement, being reminded that you're not alone during this time. And we have a newsletter we send out with fun crafts, and encouraging words from the Bible, recipes, mom life hacks, just all sorts of fun stuff right now that you can use. So we encourage you to come find us and we look forward to meeting together whenever it's safe and practical to do that. So we love you, you're not alone, and we'll see you soon. I'm Brianna and I'm Michelle. We're of the <laughs> We are one of the leaders of Propel or we, we are, are some, some of the leaders. And together we are. And together when we combine forces, we are Propel women. <laughs> I might really do that. Just a huge explosion. Just try it and see if it's like <laughs> back fire right behind you. <laughs> Joe looks good in lipstick. Joe, you look good. Well, I'm 50. <laughs> I'm 50. 50 year Remember that SNL lipstick? skit? I like to kick That's and stretch. I'm 50. <laughs> <laughs>